<clears throat> All right. So what we want to be able to do on this coordinate system is plot different points, plot different coordinates. Um, right. I, I sometimes think of this as if you ever played the, uh, the game Battleship um, when you're younger or maybe when you're older. Um, right. The idea in Battleship is you have this kind of 2D layout and you've, you've kind of put your ships down and, and the other person is trying to guess different coordinates for where your ships are. The battleship system is like uh, one of the axes is letters and then one of them is numbers. So it's like B6 or like A2. Um, the rectangular system, of course, right, is just numbers and numbers, right? Um, so when we have a point, so let's take, for example, here we have a list of points and then we have our, our coordinate system. So let's plot the point uh, A, which is 2 comma 5. So that means, right, my X value is positive two and my Y value is positive five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift positive two in the X direction. So that's gonna be one, two moves to the right. And then I'm gonna go five, positive five in the Y direction, which is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. So my coordinate A is gonna be there, right? So that's two ticks to the right and then one, two, three, four, five ticks up. I think, yeah, I, I want to say that all these, I'm hoping in the video, uh, all of the, the demarcations are coming through here. They're a little bit small. You know, I have sort of a, a free printed graph paper here that I'm using. Um, you know, you could do these by hand, of course, but having some graph paper is, is going to be good just to sort of keep everything uh, nice and organized. If you hand draw it, it's it's your sort of tick marks are, are gonna be a little bit less than perfect and that can actually make things maybe look a little bit off center when, when they shouldn't be. Um, in any event, so the idea here is just positive two in the X, positive five in the Y, so that means right by two and then up by five. Um, I would right. you're always gonna do that X movement first, that left or right movement. Um, the value B, so this is negative three, positive two, so that's negative three in the x's, that's gonna to be to the left. One, two, three, right? So negative three on the x-axis would be here. Again, you know, each of these is really just a number line, right? So this is, you know, positive one, positive two, positive three. Zero in the center, right? Negative one, negative two, negative three. So negative three here, and then positive two is gonna be up one, two. So my coordinate for b is gonna be there. Right, so negative three in the x direction and then positive two in the y direction. Um, let's just sort of just run right down the line, I guess. Okay, <clears throat> so the c coordinate is negative one, negative four. So that's a double negative, that'll be quadrant three. So negative one is just one to the left and then down one, two, three, four. Right, one, two, three, four. So negative one, negative four over here in quadrant three. That's kind of where I expect to end up and that's what I've done. Um, our point D is gonna be five, negative two. So that's one, two, right? Three, four, five in the X direction and then down one, two. So my coordinate D would be there. So all these guys get spaced out a little bit. We're not necessarily trying to do any this isn't representing any particular information that we're trying to sort of draw a line to connect them or anything like that. This is just sort of a, a, a random assortment of, of points, right? You know, if you're doing some sort of statistics or something where you have each, you know, individual kind of data points you're graphing, you can do something like connect them with, with you know, individually or sort of try to draw like a trend line that kind of goes as, as sort of best as possible, kind of through a smooth line that would kind of go through all of them. Um, in any event, um, this is the idea, right? This is what we're doing. I've got two more points here and, and they each have uh, zeros, which is fine. So, so for point E here, it's zero in the X values and then positive three in the Ys. So what that's, gonna look like is, so zero in the X means that you're right here at the center. This center point, zero, zero, is what we call the origin, right? If, you, if you're if you not moving at all, that's sort of your starting point always. 
right? So it's the origin. Zero, zero. So if, if your x value is zero, it means you just don't move to the left or to the right. You just stay right on the axis, in this case, kind of the y axis. And now we're going to move uh, vertically up by three, right? The y value is three. So one, two, three. So that point E, uh, right, sort of lives right on the y axis. It, it sort of ends up right on the vertical axis, right? So you're staying centered and you're just moving up by three. Um, our last coordinate here, F, is gonna be negative four, zero. So then that's starting again at the origin. At the center, you're gonna go four to the left. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then you're not going up or down at all because now the y value is zero. So that coordinate f sort of sits on the x-axis. There's an interesting sort of thing that happens, right? So if, you're, if your x value is zero, you actually stay fixed to the y-axis. Um, if your y value is zero, you actually stay on the x-axis because you know to move off of that, that x-axis, you have to move up or down. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a, of a, of a handoff there from a, you know, a zero in the X gives you a position on the Y type thing. Um, but, you know, I think that, that all makes sense and it's pretty reasonable. If, if you take a minute and graph everything out and, you know, you do this a little bit, you kind of get used to what these points look like and, and just sort of what this, how this process goes. Um, so yeah, that's plotting points. Of course, this would be, you know, if you we were labeling it, quadrant one, quadrant two, right, quadrant three, quadrant four. These points, you know, E and F are not in any of the quadrants particularly, right? They're just on the axis. So E is, is again on the Y axis and F is sort of on the X axis if you had to kind of describe them. Um, let's flip this around. And so let's take now a second graph and so what I did is I sort of just put some points down on here um, and what I want to do in this case is just reverse what 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 we did in the last one so rather than giving uh, us coordinates and then uh, identifying um, or and then sort of you know drawing them and, and, and plotting them putting them on the on the coordinate system uh, what we're gonna do now is we have points we want to figure out essentially what are the coordinates. So, you know, I said here, label the points or whatever, I guess maybe, you know, find the coordinates or something. You, you could sort of uh, describe this a couple of different ways. So let's just go kind of in alphabetical order. So, so the A point is here. So how did we get here? So let's count the X values first, right? So that was one to the right, and then that's down by two. So what that coordinate is going to be, right, is positive one, in the x's and then negative two in your y values, right? So that was sort of one to the right and then down by two. So that's positive one x and then negative two on your y values. So that a coordinate is gonna be one comma negative two. Um, what did I just say, alphabetical? So let's go b. So b here is, you know, one, two, three, four to the right and then up one, two. So that's positive four, right, for the X, and then positive two for the Y. Um, this makes sense from the quadrant perspective, right? So A was in quadrant four, which is positive X's and negative Y's, which is what we've got. B is in quadrant one, so that's positive and positive. So that's what we've got there, that makes sense. Um, what's next, C? So C is, is not up or down. C is one, two, three, four to the left. So the X value here is negative four, but it's not up or down at all, right? So that's gonna be negative four and then zero uh, for the uh, Y values. That's actually one of the same points we did in the last graph. So that's showing up twice. Not that it's anything special, it just is kind of by accident. Um, the value for D, D is on the Y axis, but what that actually means is you're gonna get uh, a zero for the Y and you're gonna get, in this case, so we're dropping one, two, three, four, five for the, uh, whoops, nope, not for the X value, right? The X value is zero and we're dropping five. Even though I sometimes have to stop and think for a second, right? So, so we didn't move left to right. So the X coordinate is zero. All we did is dropped one, two, three, four, five uh, units 
And so we get negative 5 in the y and 0 in the x. Right, so that's going to be the coordinate for D. Uh, what do we have left? E and F. So E is here. We go 1 to the left and then 2 up for E. So that's negative 1, right? So 1 to the left and then up by 2 is positive 2. So negative 1, positive 2 is going to be the coordinate for E. Last but not least here is F. So this is how many? So I know, well, I know this is 4, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4 for C. Looks like five, one more for F, and then down, one, two, three, four. So that's negative five, right? Five to the left, and then dropping by four. So negative five, negative four. Oh, that stuff kind of lines up, right? This was negative five, right? This is sort of a drop one more to get to the level of D. Um, and there you go. I, you know, you could kind of do this all day if you wanted to. I don't, I don't think we need to see a hundred different points to kind of get these ideas across. So, so I'll pause the videos here. Um, that's the basics for section 9.1. 9.1 is really just about trying to, you know, set this, this graphing system up. This is a graphing system, again, that, that sort of um, is used uh, a lot in math all the time, um, you know, up through sort of, you know, calculus and all sorts of stuff. You're going to use this to kind of visually represent not just coordinates, but you can also use it to represent different equations. So that's what we're going to get into in our last section, section 9.2.